Hey guys, just to let you know, this lesson is in collaboration with Flip Academy, a free online platform for all of your GCSE, A-level, IB and CBSE revision out now on web at www.flip.academy and also as an app for Apple, iOS and Android. It really is better than all the other GCSE platforms out there. It covers all the topics in great depth and has an app that you can download your courses on and use offline. Hello, welcome to Flip Academy. Today we're going to be looking at the first section of the trigonometry part of the specification. So it's specifically looking at 1.5. Uh, so the first thing you need to do is sketch and use graphs of the sine, cosine and tangent functions for angles of any size and using either degrees or radians. So just as a reminder, in order to go from degrees to radians, so deg, rad, you're just multiplying by pi over 180. So to get back the other way, you just divide by pi over 180. But some normal kind of things that you might want to normal conversions that you might want to remember is 0 is obviously 0 then you have 90 degrees which is pi over 2 180 degrees which is pi and 360 degrees which is 2 pi those are just some common ones that you're going to see recurring so let's go through it shall we so we need to sketch the graph of y equals 2 cos x between minus pi and plus pi so effectively it's between minus 180 degrees and plus 180 degrees so we should hopefully know what the cos x graph looks like. Right, it starts off as it, at its maximum value and then it goes down and then so on. So in this case, the maximum value normally is 1. However, since we're multiplying it by 2 because of this part of the equation here, it's going to start at 2 and go down to minus 2. Okay, so this happens at 0 pi, then at pi over 2 it goes through uh, 0 and then at pi it goes here. So on the other side it's going to be just a complete reflection of this so it's going to go down and along and again this would be here pi over 2 except negative and this side here will be minus pi and that's all you really need to do for that question so a quick two marks not too bad. Then it says point P and Q lie on the curve and they have x coordinates of one third pi and pi respectively and we need to work out the length of PQ. So with PQ, what we want to do first is work out what the x coordinates, are, uh, sorry, the y coordinates are. So we have a third pi. So now all we need to do is work out what it is. So whenever we're dealing with trigonometry, we need to make sure that we're in the right, men uh, the right mode. So at the moment we're in degrees mode, which we see that capital D is highlighted. So shift menu, angle unit, and then radians. And then what we can do is we can just type in 2 cos one third pi and that will give us our value and it's one perfect and then whoops q is pi and we can sub the exact same thing in just delete the fraction and we get negative two so in order to work out the length of a line, uh, what we can do is essentially just work out, well, essentially what we're doing is we have two points, right, with these coordinates. And I know this isn't actually kind of to scale. So all we're going to do is basically use Pythagoras to find out the length right, where the x along here is just going to be pi minus a third pi, and here is going to be just the difference between minus 2 and 1, so minus 2 minus 1. So that equals minus 3, or 3, doesn't really make a difference, and this would be 2 pi over 3. So the actual length is just equal to, again, we're just going to be using Pythagoras, so square root 2 pi over 3 squared, plus minus 3 squared and it says give your answer to a single decimal place so let's get to it so we have square root and then open bracket 2 pi over 3 and squared plus minus 3 squared and that will be our answer Three point seven units. We don't know what the actual values are. 
Okay, so a few kind of key things that we've gone through now is making sure you check your calculator for degrees versus radians. You need to do that every single time you come across trigonometry. Just think about what units you're using. We have uh, sketching the graphs and also transforming them, conversions between degrees and radians by hand, and then also calculating the length of a line. So the next thing is you do need to know certain exact values for sine, cosine, and tangent of 30, 45, and 60 degrees. So this can be kind of uh, tricky, but you do need to remember it for your non-calculator papers. So uh, keep an eye on that. So uh, I can go through a couple of them now. So sine 30 is just a half, and then sine 45, and we can go on and on from that. So that should be root 2 over 2, and then sine 60 is just, should be root 3 over 2. So there is a little trick that I can show you to kind of help with this. Um, so the way we can look at it is you have 30, 45, and 60, and what you can think of is it's just going up in ones, right? So like this. So root 1 is just 1 over 2, and then root 2 over 3, and then root 3 over 2. Uh, so that should actually be a 2, two there. Okay, so that's one way to think of it. The cosine ones actually work backwards. So what I mean by that is you're going to, instead of going up, you're going to go down. So this one is root 3 over 2. This one is root 2 over 2, same for both of them. And then cos 60 is uh, 1 over 2. So can you see that it's just kind of working backwards, right? So in this one, the number on top goes up, and this one it just goes down. So it's completely backwards. That should make sense because cosine is just a transformed version of the sine graph. And then with tangent, I'll show you what those look like. So if you bear with me two seconds. We have start with root 3 over 3. Also, there is another way you can work out the tan ones. If you remember that tan is just equal to sine over cos. So all we're going to be doing is taking the sine 30 value, so a half, and dividing it by root 3 over 2. And that is also giving us our answer. So you can also work it out kind of using the definition of tan, which is just sine divided by cos. Then you have tan 45. Now again, what we're doing is taking root 2 over 2 and dividing it by root 2 over 2. So if you divide the, something by itself, it always gives you the answer of 1. And we can just keep going with that. So hopefully that all makes sense. Again, you can work out these values um, by hand. And this last one will just be root 3. Because again, when you divide these two, they cancel, and then it flips to give you the correct answer. The next bit is literally just about uh, notation, okay? So, generally speaking, if we have something like sine um, x equals one half, then to work out what x is, we need to do the inverse sine. So, when I write sine to the minus one, or cos to the minus one, or tan to the minus one, all it means is I'm doing the inverse function, and generally you're just going to be using it in order to work out angles, right? So for example, if I want to get rid of the sine part here, I take the inverse sine of both sides in order to work out what the angle is. Okay, And that's just the same for sine, cos, and tan. So the opposite of sine x is inverse sine x. Lastly is probably the trickiest part of this part of the uh, trig spec. It's using these identities in order to kind of basically rearrange equations like this and also to find all of the solutions for simple trig equations lying in a specific interval. So this is using the cast diagram or the graphs, okay? So I'm going to show you the cast diagram because it is far more reliable and it's a bit more mathematical. But again, if you do want to kind of remember rules or use the graphs, that's totally fine as well. So this is how they look. It will be a part A where they want you to show that something can be written as something else. And then a part B where they say, therefore solve it. So that's exactly what we are going to do in this case. So when we have 1 plus sine x, 
Now in my answer, I do not have a tan x, so I know I need to get rid of tan x. And tan x can be written as sine, x, sine over cos. So we're going to have sine x over cos x, and that equals 5 cos x. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to times through everything by cos x to get rid of this fraction, because again, in my answer, I don't have a fraction. So now I have cos x plus sine x times sine x is sine squared x equals 5 cos squared x. Okay. Now in my answer, I don't have any signs, right? Now one kind of trick to remember is that if you want to get rid of a sign, you kind of have to use the sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 formula. So if we have sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1, then sine squared x equals 1 minus cos squared x. Okay, so we can sub that in straight away, and cos squared is indeed in our answer, so it kind of implies that we're doing something right. So now we have cos x plus 1 minus cos squared x equals 5 cos squared x. And now if I look at my answer, I can see that the cos squareds are positive, so I'm going to move everything on the left-hand side over to the right-hand side, which is going to give me 5 cos squared x plus cos squared x, which is 6 cos squared x, minus cos x, minus 1 equals 0. Nice and easy. Now for part B, it says hence solve. So the word hence in the exam, I want you to replace that idea for a second, okay? Forget about the textbook definition of it. Hence, for the purposes of maths or any other subjects you're doing, um, in terms of mathematical based ones, is always going to mean using the first part. So using part A or part one or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so the word hence just means use this to work out this. So without even writing um, this again, I'm literally just going to write the answer to the previous part, which was 6 cos squared x minus cos x minus 1 equals 0. You don't even have to think, okay? When it says hence, it just means using the previous part. That's all it ever means in this regard. And now we have uh, the fact, well, it's a quadratic equation, isn't it? So you can either solve this by factorization, quadratic formula, whatever you want to do. I'm going to use the quadratic formula just to make it a bit easier for me. And we're going to obviously get two solutions. So quadratic formula, let's go. That's minus b, so in this case that's minus of minus 1, plus b squared, so that's minus 1 squared. So, and then that's minus 4ac, so minus 4, 6, and minus 1 all over 2 times 6. Okay, So if s equals, our first solution is a half, so let's put that over here. And our second solution is minus a third. Okay, So I've got two different solutions, and now I need to find all of the values in this region. So keep in mind, when we did our cos x graph right at the beginning, this goes on forever in both directions. It goes on infinitely, which means if I'm looking for cos x equals half, right, there is an infinite number of values where cos x equals a half, okay? So we always need to use the limit in order to give us certain values. So there are multiple answers in this region, but we're limiting ourselves to this region itself, okay? Inside which there's going to be multiple answers. So now x is just going to equal the inverse cos of a half. Now, if you remember, I'm in degrees mode, so perfect. When I refreshed, it was fine. But you need to make sure you check. So shift, mode, angle unit. We're in degrees in this question. So inverse cos of a half, so 0 0.5, gives me 60 degrees. Now I'm going to draw the cast diagram, and I'll go through what this means. Now, don't worry too much because we are going to get a ton of practice with this in this video. So don't worry too much about it. But 
when we have the cos x value, as you can see, the actual ratio itself is positive and the angle is positive, which means we're going to put this in the A section. Now the A section just means all. Now this is where all three, so if you want to go through the cast diagram, C is cosine, S is sine, T is tangent, A is all. Now what these represent are the regions in which our ratio is positive. So for example, in the S region, sine ratios are positive. So if we had sine x equals plus a half, we would draw a line here because the ratio is positive and sine is positive in this region. But since we have cos, we're going to draw our other one over here. And that's 60 degrees. Okay. So as you can imagine, the A for all, it means that all of our answers are going to be put into this region at first if this thing is positive. Now, how do we read these angles? Well, what we do is we actually do anti-clockwise from the horizontal line. So in this case, this angle here is going to represent 360 minus 60, which is 300 degrees. But you may notice that we're stopping at 180. So this is actually going to be discarded at the end. Okay. So just as a reminder, this is going to be 0 and 360. This is going to be 90 degrees. This is going to be 180 degrees. And this is going to be 270 degrees. Okay. So if I'm 60 degrees away from the 360 line, that means I must be at 300. Okay. Now, I can keep going round, but the thing is, I'm already outside my limit, so I'm not going to bother. Now, with the minus a third, this is where things get slightly more interesting. So let's do cos inverse. And I am aware that I could have just changed the values instead of starting again, but you know. I get 109.5 degrees, I'm going to round it up. Now, the angle is positive, but if you notice, the actual ratio itself is negative. So since it's negative, I'm going to be looking in the regions where cosine is negative, which is in the tangent region and the sine region. And again, I'm going to write my angle, so 109.5 and 109.5. Then all I'm going to do is do, so if I want to work out this angle here for sine, again, I'm working, what I'm actually working out is this angle. That's 180 minus 109.5. So 180 minus 109.5 is an angle of 70.5 degrees. And the next angle to work out this part is I'm going to do 180 plus 109.5. I already know that it's going to be outside my range, so if you didn't include it, that's completely fine. But I'm just going to do it for demonstration purposes. 188, whoops. 180 plus 109.5, there we are. 289 and a half degrees. 0.5 degrees, which I know is not is too big for our range. So our actual final answer is going to be 60. I like to put them in kind of size order, but it's not it's not necessary. And 109.5 degrees. So with this question, since it's a quadratic, keep in mind you are going to get two sets of values. You're going to use two cast diagrams, or again, if you use the um, graphs are going to have two of those as well. So just keep that in mind. We now need to prove the identity sine theta plus cos theta is equal to one, uh, sorry, open bracket one minus sine theta cos theta is equivalent to sine cubed theta plus cos cubed theta. So let's get to it. Well, we have brackets. Uh, there's no brackets in the answer, so let's expand them. So we have sine theta minus sine squared theta cos theta plus cos theta minus sine theta cos squared theta. Okay, so now it, here might be the kind of tricky part that you're not too sure about what you're going to do. Well, what I'd look at is, in my answer I have sine cubed theta and cos cubed theta, so I know that this cos theta and this sine theta disappears, and these weird kind of conjoined terms here, the sine coses, they're going to go away. So how can I make that happen? Well, I can get rid of the cos, cos squared and make it sine squared. And sine squared times sine 
will give me sine cubed. And likewise here, I can get rid of the sine squared and make it cos squared, and that will give me cos cubed. So the way I do that is I use, once again, the fact that sine squared plus cos squared equals 1, which means that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos squared theta, and cos squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. And that will give me the answer I'm looking for, I'm hoping. So we have sine theta minus 1 minus cos squared theta cos theta plus cos theta minus sine theta 1 minus sine squared theta. And then from here what we can start doing is expanding the brackets and simplifying. So we have sine theta and then that becomes a minus 1 and then that becomes minus cos squared theta times cos theta is minus cos cubed, but then we have another minus, that's plus cos cubed theta, plus cos theta, that here should be minus cos theta, minus sine theta, plus sine cubed theta. So get rid of these sines because they cancel out, get rid of the coses they cancel out, and we are indeed left with sine cubed theta plus cos cubed theta. So that is 100% correct. Now in the next part it's going to probably say hence solve the equation. And it says uh, solve it and it has 3 cos cubed theta. So again I'm not even going to bother writing out the same thing again. We're going to have sine cubed theta plus cos cubed theta equals 3 cos theta. Move the cos cubed over to the other side, so we have sine cubed theta equals 2 cos cubed theta. Now here's the interesting part. If you remember, sine x over cos x equals tan x. So if I divide the cos cubed to the other side, I'm going to get sine cubed theta over cos cubed theta which actually equals tan cubed theta. So that kind of solves my issue for me. That gives me tan cubed theta equals 2. So tan theta equals the cube root of 2. And that means I can start doing the cast diagram. Not too bad, right? So theta equals the inverse tan of cube root of 2. So inverse tan cube root 2, 51.6 degrees let's call it, and again we're going between 0 and 360. So again, the first angle is always in the uh, all section. So our next angle, which is here, is going to be 180 plus 51.6. So again, I am being a bit lazy using calculator, but this is a calculator question, so it's all good. 231.6. And again, I could go around again to find more solutions, but they're going to be outside my range, so why bother? So that is the correct answer. Again, it's a three marker. And it really didn't take me that long. So that is extremely, extremely useful. Now this one is a lot of fun. So proving this identity. So what we're going to do is have a look. So we have 1 plus cos theta over sine theta. And we have sine theta over 1 plus cos theta. It's equivalent to 2 over sine theta. So again, when it, we have this equivalent sign, we're not actually making them equal to each other. We're going to show that we can write this in this form, which is why in all my previous questions I haven't kind of written, oh this equals 2 over sine theta and then I try to like cross cancel or anything. That's not what we're trying to do, we're just trying to rewrite something, we're not trying to cross cancel or solve or anything like that. Well we, we are, but in part 2 anyway. So let's get started. So we have this weird kind of setup. So we can try and combine the fractions or we can get rid of the fractions uh, and either one is completely fine. If we want to combine the fractions, we'll need to times this one, top and bottom, by 1 plus cos theta. And we need to times this one, top and bottom, by sine theta, in order to make the denominators the same. So 
if I do that, we have 1 plus cos theta times 1 plus cos theta. And then if we do the same for the other side and combine the fractions in one fell swoop, we have sine squared theta. And that's all over the new combined denominator, I'm sorry for my handwriting, of sine theta 1 plus cos theta. And we need to prove that this is equal to uh, 2 over sine theta. So what we're going to do is we're going to expand all of the brackets that we have. So we have 1, right, plus, and that would be 2 cos theta, because we have cos theta times 1 plus cos theta times 1, plus cos squared theta plus sine squared theta. Okay. And on the bottom we have sine theta plus sine theta cosine theta. So what we can look at here is we definitely have sine squared plus cos squared, so we know that equals 1, right? So we have 1 plus 2 cos theta plus 1. So again, we can use equal signs here. It's just not on the other side. We can't really use them. And I'm going to factorise out a sine theta. So let's factorise out sine theta 1 plus. And I am aware that that is exactly the same as what we had before, but we couldn't have known until we got through the question that might be useful. So here we have 2 plus 2 cos theta over sine theta. And hopefully now you're seeing why I did this. Because if I factorise out a 2, because again, if I look on top, I knew I had a 2 left over. I have 1 plus cos theta on top, and I also have a 1 plus cos theta on the bottom. Which means I can do a fancy little cancelling. Cancel, cancel, and I'm left with, as shown above, or as asked for above, that this is all equal to 2 over sine theta. Whew! So, hence solve the equation that all of this nonsense is equal to 3 over cos theta and solve it. So all we're going to do here is I'm going to sub in what we got before, which is 2 over sine theta. Now, generally speaking, when you have these equations and you have a sine theta and a cos theta and they're not squared or anything, you're going to want to try and get sine over cos. So if I times both sides by sine, I get 2 equals 3 sine theta over cos theta. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So now I have 2 thirds. And sine over cos is just tan theta. Okay, so nice and easy. Next thing we're going to do is just do inverse tan of both sides, and that will give us the <coughs> value we're going to use for our answer. So we have inverse tan, and that is in degrees mode, yep, uh, two thirds. 33.7 degrees. And once again, we ha head over to the trusty cast diagram. C, A, S, T. It's in the all section and in the tangent section. This is 33.7, this is also 33.7. So we're going to work out that angle, which is 180 plus 33.7. So 180, ah, dang it, okay, my number was on 180 plus 33.7. Gives an answer of 213.7, which is our final answer. So that covers like the first half or the first part of trigonometry that you can expect in your papers as we've gone through a few of the questions. But keep in mind that the next video is also the kind of further trigonometry that you're going to have to know. But for now, I will leave you to it.